Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Drawing Out Toby. Before I begin, I want to let you know that you're all valid and truly wonderful. I also want to give a big shout out to all my patrons on Patreon. I also have questions at the end of this video, and I would love to hear from you in the comments below. About a month ago, I got a request to do Bert and Ernie as many of us feel that they are part of our LGBTQ community. I mean, come on. We all know that they are more than just roommates or friends. Regardless, they are beloved by many of us. On these art projects, I often just start with a rough sketch at first, usually with a rough pose idea in my head with some loose references to guide me. I then refine the sketch, adjusting as I go along. Once the sketch is done, I will ink it, color it, and shade it, and then add any final touches. As this drawing unfolds, I want to apologize for not having recent content. A lot of changes have been happening in my life. Of course, there is my new love interest, so I've been preoccupied with thoughts concerning her. I'm actually quite crazy about her, and I feel that we are right for each other. I don't want to reveal too much because I value her privacy, but I do think that she is an awesome person and I feel lucky to have met her. We have exchanged early holiday gifts from our Amazon wish lists, and the icing on the cake was that both of our gifts arrived on the very same day. The main thing that has been sent me back is not her, however. It's a big animated Toby Crates project. But because of the size and scope, I've been experiencing technical issues. Mostly it has to do with lip syncing and editing. If I can get it completed, the subject will be somewhat yesterday's news, but I will upload it anyways. The show is called Toby Creates Late Night, and it's an animated talk show, but with real guest interviews. I've already done my first interview, and it went well. I just need to get past the technical issues. Additionally, I got further behind due to a new part-time job as a cashier. It isn't good for my busted wrist, but I wear a brace so it helps. It kills my back though because of a recurring pinched nerve and my knees are shot. So standing all day long you know, hurts them. Both of my knees and my wrist are service-connected injuries. Fortunately, it didn't take long to remember most of the stuff I used to know. So, I'm back at my old employment, but this time I am only a cashier, and of course, as a full-time transgendered woman in the workplace. For the most part, things are going well. If another associate misgenders me, they are often quick to amend the slip of the tongue, or if they dead name me, they correct themselves. One associate, who I suspect is on the autism spectrum, had trouble understanding what was going on with me. I had to explain matters to them, and they're struggling a bit to get it. But they are a good person, and I used to be their supervisor, so I care a lot about them, and I'm patient. Of course, I do get misgendered now and then by customers, and I've noticed a sprinkling of the cisgendered stare. When I first started coming out, I really hadn't cared too much about my own pronouns. I think that was partly due to the fact that I had so many personal issues and I really didn't care too much about myself. However, now that I've worked through those issues, being misgendered, getting those stares, or worse, does affect me because it is a lack of common respect for me as a person. Fortunately. Nothing majorly offensive has happened so far, but I'm bracing for the worst, but I'm also hoping for the best. To make matters worse, my car died last Friday. The engine looks like it's blown, and any repairs I have to do to it would be more than what I paid for it. I'm short in funds for a new car, so I'm going to junk my old car and get a little cash out of her. I'll probably take out a loan and get a new used car from a dealership. I also plan to sell my motorcycle to help pay for the car. 
My job is within walking distance, but because of my bad knees and the hills, it is tough, it's cold, and I have all closing shifts. The very idea of walking home at night as a trans woman is scary to me. We are often targets of violence these days. I fear for my safety. I fear for the safety of my fellow trans sisters. And I hope things will only get better for us in the future. However, I keep visualizing bad scenarios should I have to walk home at night. This kind of situation makes me wish I really did live on Sesame Street. That would be really great. Now, before I leave you, what are your thoughts, concerns, and experiences about being trans in the workplace? Also, what are your thoughts about transgender violence? Now, remember, I think you are all valid, you are all wonderful, and I love you all. Bye-bye.